This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. Sebastian, we we were just chatting for a second before the show. Uh, You seem exhausted. I don't know what's going on, man. You're staring off at the space. Like, like, uh, can you make it through this, bro? How you feeling? (laughs) Sebastian Maniscalco, of course, on the other end. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back, baby. Yeah, you're back. I'm in a fog. What's up? Uh, So let me take you back. To what I, I didn't even tell you this. Uh, October 1st, I told my wife, and this was very ambitious. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I said, I'm the heaviest I've ever been. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the scale at 206 and a half, right? All right. I said, this has got to stop. I mean, I was eating everything in sight like a shark. Drinking a, a half a bottle of wine a night, if not more. Right. Like to the point where, God forbid, but if you were to go from a heart attack in the peak of all that, would you be considered a COVID death? Uh, I don't think I'd be considered a COVID death. But if I did have a t- heart attack and they asked my wife, what's he been eating? They would say, yeah, we kind of expected that. Like. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you wouldn't have been eating like that if you had all your shows and you were on the road, yeah. right? You, you were quarantined. Yeah, no. It's a COVID death, totally. guy. It's a COVID death. <laughs> it's a COVID death, but it's not from COVID. It's, bro, it's, bro, it's a... it don't matter. It don't matter. If someone <laughs> dies and someone yells out COVID while you're dying, then it automatically COVID, bro. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Getting technical now come on yeah yeah you're right you're right it's uh it would it would have technically been a covid death yeah. so i decided i gotta get into shape i gotta i gotta i gotta start doing something so i told my wife i'm gonna try to lose <laughs> a pound a pound a day for one month right good god no. That's scientifically impossible. I, I would imagine, but, man. I but, mean, I don't even think a uh, bulimic could pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know, I was still kind of drinking, not really watching what I ate. But I got serious about this two weeks ago. Lana and I ordered uh, pre-made meals to the house, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, Basically, yeah. take take it out of the refrigerator, heat it up. And they're all healthy meals, like That's paleo. So suburban housewifey, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you going to Curves, too, in the afternoon? Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey, I, drastic, <laughs> drastic measures needed to be taken. Uh, apparently, <laughs> because <laughs> Linda, if we did, <laughs> <laughs> if we did, if we didn't order the meals, I would have been in a full cardiac arrest. Now I know my mom listens to the show, and she's gonna call me and go, "You were gonna die, and you were gonna tell me." <laughs> What about all these visits to the farm stand? What are you doing there? Yeah, bro, I'm eating fruits and vegetables. But what I'm yeah. saying is, like, when we went to North Carolina uh, uh, for 10 days, I was eating fish and chips, like, uh, yeah, know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, I, it, burgers, meat. Right, right. It I wasn't get it. good. That's, I, your thing. That's the thing that you go to. I get it, you know? It wasn't good. So I kicked this thing into gear about two weeks ago, like I said. I hired a trainer, mm-hmm. guy I've used in the past. He's coming to the house twice a week. And this guy ain't no joke, bro. This is, uh, I just had a workout before I, I, I'm, I'm doing this. And uh, type of workout where during the workout, you ever think that if I go a little harder, I might pass away? You know, one of those uh, yeah. lightheaded, lightheaded, you, you get off. I was on the Stairmaster. I got off the stairmaster. I had to take a knee and uh, really kind of gather myself, almost to the verge of throwing up. 
Yeah, the nauseous. I know that. Ooh, that's good, bro. That's a four. That's what I call a four-star workout. I rate my workouts. I usually have twos, a three. Yeah. But when you're having a four and you're doing stomach crunches and you're like, ah, this is a four-star workout. I can eat a fucking pizza after this shit. So... <laughs> So you you probably have one of them workouts where your body is probably like, yo, we need to we need a ten to fifteen minute absolute shutdown nap, <laughs> right? All parts, all parts. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, what I like to do is I like to do the workout, then I go and take a steam for fifteen minutes, and it really kind of just feels like something's been accomplished when you put the steam at yeah. the end of it. I mean. I got no sweat left in my body at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic workout. It's one of those things where I I had the workout. I had a half hour to steam and shower to get ready for this. And there was a moment there that I came out of the shower. I looked at my bed and I asked myself, do I need to lay down? Oh, yeah, bro. Are you kidding me? People make the mistake of thinking the steam is the is the is the rest. Steam room, that's like a workout on its own. Your heart is pumping. It doesn't know what the fuck is going on, right? You know, <clears throat> is this? And then and then you come out of all that. When you what do you you shower you shower and you're sitting here. Oh, it's like this is insane. Yeah. So, so I got to tell you, I feel phenomenal though. I. No drinking yeah. for two weeks. All right. I went to Vegas this weekend with my buddies from uh, L.A. here. We did a golf golf weekend, and we went out to dinner. And I, I, I got to get into this, too. Yeah. Uh, masked up. Don't don't get all hopped up uh, on, on the other side of this, people. You, know, you went out. We went out. They did the protocol. We tested before we went. I te- yeah. I, I got to tell you again. I got to pat yeah. myself on the back here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I provided COVID tests for everybody that was going on the trip before they got on the plane with me. I wow. Mean, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, that's one of those gifts that you did it for yourself, but it looks like you did it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're basically telling these guys, don't test positive because you ain't getting on this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we tested and then we went and then I arranged for another test at the at the hotel. To get back on the plane. I mean, it's just, it's what? it's front front to back customer you, service. You're so. getting tested like the president, like to get near the president. You got to get tested twice on the walk towards him. And, you know, I mean, this is fantastic. I love it, dude. Oh, man, that's great. That's why, right. that's, you know, the world we're living in and you're adapting, bro. You're adapting. Got to, got to adapt. Got to adapt. So, um, where was I going to with this with the Vegas thing? The um, masked up, and you the, said, yeah. yeah, masked up, went to Vegas. Um, I and I sent video. you yeah. the video, right? Oh and, boy, and that was the tip of the iceberg, bro. Uh, I haven't posted the video yet, I don't know if I'm going to, but I shared it with Pete privately. It's a video of a guy waiting for his table at the restaurant with a light up mask what they're doing in vegas now is they're coming out and basically the mask is behaving as a glow stick they they, they got lights on them they yeah. got um uh they glow in the dark they have you know like they, they, it's like a tv screen on the mask oh i saw i saw it's <sighs> that that makes me like, you know, as a human being, we're not supposed to judge. I see that guy, and right away I got an opinion about him, you know? Oh, l- listen, this guy was waiting for a pandemic to wear a glow-in-the-dark mask, bro, right? I feel like it, man. They don't want to go back, bro. Go to one of them Arab countries where they wear them all the time if that's what you want to wear. We don't wear that shit here. And by the way, by the way, we're all masked up now, and this shit's still flaring up all over the place. <laughs> So, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe, these, you know, I'm just saying, everyone's like, where am I? And it's, so it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> so this guy, he's got his glow in the dark mask. 
I'll get cool, bro. I'm sorry. I don't want to turn this into some other kind of show. (laughs) So this guy's waiting for his table with his glow in the dark. And I'm looking at this sap going, look at this shit, this guy. This guy hoping a girl comes up to him and goes, oh, I love your mask. Uh, yeah. Is that what it's come to now? Yeah. Like, it, you know, it used to be you wore a cool jacket. Now you wear, now you got, now the thing is you got a cool mask. Bro, we, we have no advantage now being unbelievably fucking handsome men. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like all of a sudden you took away Superman's cape and he's just walking around in tights with everybody else. This is insane. Now, now, now whoever can express themselves by their mask the best is like, you know, hip. You know what I'm saying? So, you, you know, you probably had a decent cloth one, but I mean, I'd be walking around Vegas with a blue surgical mask on, and now I'm next to this guy with his knee on up, and all of a sudden I look like some uh, 80-year-old retiree, right? Like, who's not hip, because look at my, right? Oh, yeah, no, you you, you wear the blue doctor mask, they, they look at you like, look at this, look at this guy, he didn't even take the time to go and get a mask. I saw people that had the mask match their purse. Like the like oh, the they're oh ma- the, they're matching the mask with the outfit. Like you know you were you brought this up the other I mean about four or five weeks ago where like if you're going to a- adapt to the mask, you're almost accepting that this is a new way of life where you're now going to go out and customize your mask. Yeah, Man. yeah. It, it, like like these people are going to be disappointed when there's a vaccine. They're going to look at their closet full of masks and go, oh, I guess I'll put those in the ad. No, burn them, you fucking lunatic. I'm sorry. I'm going off the rails again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy, dude. But listen, I know why this thing is spreading because this is the first time in eight months that I've actually been out and about around people. Mm -hmm. And it's... It's ridiculous. I was at the sports book laying a bet for the Super Bowl. And and, and by the way, if you want to go and see what desperation looks like, go to a sports book. Yeah. You you ever look at the guy? You ever look at the guys in there? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's like, no, they're, they're just betting like. Oh, wait, but they're in Vegas, so at least, yeah, yeah, and they sit down in big chairs. I know what you're talking about, yeah. They they all know one another because they go there every weekend. You know, it's one of these types of, like, real small, tight-knit communities where they're like, hey, Fred, what's going on? Oh, fucking lost Eagles. See that field goal? You know, like, everything, life revolves around the spread, yeah, yeah, I know, man. And now it's like they got these games they're betting on. All of a sudden, the guy gets the virus. Like, you know, you can't even account for that, right? Crazy. <laughs> I wonder if the virus is built into the spread, just in case, like, someone goes down with the virus. Is that built in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you got a star player on one team, and you're like, the spread would be minus five, but we all know so-and-so is not going to stay in his hotel room when he gets to Denver. <laughs> so he may have COVID, so we're putting that at four and a half, right? I don't know. They are unbelievably dead on, those guys. It is scary. The guys who actually make the spreads, it's like mind-boggling. Uh, it, it, it's um, mind-boggling. It's unreal. Unreal. But the guys in the sports book could yeah. care less about COVID. I mean, uh, really? I I think they they'd rather get COVID than lose by you know the under. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Like if they like got a, a two parlay coming or whatever they call it's betting, they're like this comes in and you get COVID or this don't come in and you don't get COVID. If <laughs> you like blow on me, baby, blow on me. <laughs> I don't oh, know, so man. They- so, so yeah, so there's some irresponsibility going on in the betting place here, huh? Well, that, and and I've noticed that mask placement on someone, I'm seeing a lot of displaced masks where, you know, the, the nose is hanging out, it's askew, it's hanging off one ear. I've noticed people that are doing that, they look 
disheveled in life, you know, like you right. can't be disheveled in life and have a proper mask. If you're disheveled in life, your mask is going to be fucked up, right? Well, that's, you ever see somebody disheveled and all of a sudden they got like a sharp Gucci pad and mask or something? And you're like, <laughs> what is that? Are you like a professor and you're just so smart? You're always messy. Is that what's going on? You know what I well, I got a side question here, and we'll get back to Vegas, but I uh, wanted to, I was at today, again, keeping Jackie company, another one of her, she's got a lot of aunts and uncles at a certain age around here, another one passed away, very older aunt, so we went to this service at the church at about 11 o'clock today, right? Small service, not a lot of people, maybe 50. Same church. Oh, wait, 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 yeah, don't burn through this here, don't All burn right. through this. I want to pump the brakes even before you get into the story. I think we should do a uh, a segment on the show called uh, you know Pete's Wakes. What what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are on a run. <laughs> did you pick up any things at the wake that you would like to implement or not implement at your wake? I picked up one of the hugest things <laughs> at Jackie's aunt's funeral today for a funeral wake that I that I ever saw. I didn't even know you could do it. Are you <laughs> Are you ready to be blown away by this little number? Oh, oh, oh I'm gonna make sure this shit's on. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so we're at the church, right? Maybe about 50, 60 people. Um it's church down the block from Jackie's. It's a nice one, right? So we're they have you every other pew. We're sitting there. Priest starts, and I don't I don't go to this church, but I know the priests around there. They're all Polish old guys, you know. It's Dunkirk and Fredonia. You're not getting. They're not. The Vatican's not sending the heavy hitters to Fredonia. You know what I'm saying? But this guy starts talking, and I'm like, I look up because I'm like, this guy's good. I like I like his style. The priest, you know. Turns out. This guy is a priest in New York City. That's high level, high level, right? Friend of the family flew him in. Halfway through his little sermon, he stops. A woman starts singing from the pew with the organ. I, I swear to God, I thought it was that uh, old lady from uh, the, uh, You Got Talent from England. What was that lady's name? It was famous for like a half a second. Uh, you know, an old lady that everybody loved. Oh, yeah, I forgot her name. Yeah, yeah, this woman sounded like that, and Jackie goes, my God, who, do you hear that voice? And I did one of them turn around, look, so, priest flew in his singer from his church in Manhattan, okay? So, my point is, if you're having a mass somewhere where you live, but you, you know, you don't want, if you're going to die and you won't, don't want to make everyone travel, but you're not a fan of your local priest, you can fly in your own priest to take over the to take over the church and tighten it up. You know what I'm saying? How nice is that? <laughs> what I'm wondering is, does he, does he tell the head priest of the church, guy, you can go get fucking coffee and come back in about 45 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got another. We got a. We got a. Uh, we're bringing in a ringer here. Now, that is. Do they got deep pockets, or was you think that was in the will? Friend of the family lived in Dunkirk. Went out, you know, became a big time priest in in Manhattan, and just as a favor to the family, you know, he flew in. I don't know who paid for it, and he just tightened the whole thing. Up, just classed it up, you know. Uh, and then everybody was dressed nice, which leads me to wonder if he was stopping them at the fucking door. Go, <laughs> you ain't getting in with that shit. Go home and change. <laughs> now, another question I wanted to ask you: I look around at one point, and the notion I got my mask on, and and the notion that you can scientifically breathe the same with the mask and without the mask. Uh, listen, I'm not an idiot. That is not true. Because I couldn't breathe, and I pulled it down, and I sucked in, and it was, like, fantastic. You know what I mean? It was like, but everyone in there was older and stuff, a lot of them. So I was being very respectful, and I always end with the mask. I complain on the show, but I wear it. Point is, if you look around, and everybody else in the room is wearing their mask, is it okay for you to pull yours down and take a couple gulps? 
Yes, I think it is fine if you wanted just to take it down, breathe a little air, put it back up. I think I don't think that's a problem. Again, scientifically, I don't know what that would cause within the room, but I totally agree with you, and I don't want to uh, compare your story to mine. It just happened to me right before I got on the cast. The trainer I have wears a mask, and I wear a mask while working out, right? We're in close right. proximity to one another. He, yeah, we, no, we keep, yeah, we we keep distance. But I'm working out with a mask for the first time. Now I'm on the stairmaster and I'm doing a 17 for 45 seconds, and I'm breathing. I was breathing so heavy, the mask was going down my throat. You know, like the the <laughs> right. You could see yeah. a hole. It, where my mouth is through the mask, you know, like I'm sucking in fabric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you say. I'd say insane. <laughs> and as soon as I let it go, it was like I was underwater with that damn thing, right? Right. That is basically waterboarding, but they do that same thing with water. That's that you were waterboarding yourself with air. <laughs> While you were running on a tread. It's <laughs> yeah. fucking ridiculous, bro. It's like a, it's like, it's like, oh, I mean, if you want like a sci-fi movie where someone's looking down going, we're so much smarter than them. We got them torturing themselves. We don't even have to do it. Look at it. Can you imagine getting a rat to burn itself? That's what we're doing with these people. I mean, <laughs> Jackie teaches spin class, right? So. Oh, I'm losing you again. Damn it. Is that my Wi-Fi? I think it's yours. I'm on full bar over here. I, you know, I got to say, I, I, that's, I don't like when people say that. Like, like somehow. <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> Just because you got all five bars, that means it's my problem. I mean, I, I, all right. Guess what? I got all five bars too, guy. There you go. All right. So. I guess we got to go back to the beginning and figure this out with the balls. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh, God. It's okay. All right. So, it's working now, man. Okay. Okay. So. So uh, you got any more on the funeral? Oh, uh, on the funeral? No, uh, that's about it, man. Made a, that's about it. No, I, I, but I just really that stood out as an unbelievable move. Now, at the funeral at the church, are they doing communion? Yes. Yeah, they are. So, so wait a minute. This, the priest is taking the thing, and he's putting it in your hand. Is isn't that like basically feeding you Corona? He he gloves up. The whole thing is disgusting because I got Nicorette <laughs> gum in my mouth. I got to put that to the side. Then I got to let the, the body of Christ melt without touching the gum. <laughs> so uh, I didn't get it today because I got it. I went to church Saturday and I felt uh, two body of Christ within three days of each other. Is like, you know, one of my priests. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what do you want? Do you space out your body of Christ? One a week, yeah. My body is like, what are you trying to do here? Guy, fend off a, a, you know, do exorcism or something? It's ridiculous. You ever? <laughs> did we talk about this? You ever see the priest like this guy did one of those? He did a bite halfway through and crunched it, and it like a Dorito didn't even, do, and he made it look delicious. It almost made me go get it, bro. It, and he crunched it right on the mic. I'm like, guy, if there was a commercial for the body of Christ, you'd be fucking doing it, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've seen that. I've seen that at church, where the priest takes a bite of it, and the microphone's right below, right? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I go, what the? F why is he biting it? Why isn't he just putting it on the tongue and doing a dissolve? Why is this guy take? Why is he biting it like a saltine? <laughs> right, man. <laughs> right. I think he's trying to lure you in for the people out there in the pews that were thinking they weren't going to get it. He does a half crunch and, and you and look at the wife and go, let's get the fucking bread. Let's get the bread. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So <laughs> if you go, it's like you go to a buffet, you walk up to the buffet, you look at some other guy's dish, you're like, oh god, I wasn't gonna get a macaroni and cheese, but did you see that shit on that guy's plate? <laughs> so, so if you go up right and you take it from his glove, right? Did you right. see anybody doing? Did you see anybody doing that where he was laying it on the tongue, or do you have to take it by hand to hand? I, yeah, I don't even think he was offering it to the mouth, man. Yeah, hands okay. are going up. Yeah, but pre pre COVID, if mm. if he if he takes it to the mouth, can you tell the priest just a bite and take a bite out of his out of his hand? <laughs> no, I go, guy, you hold it. I'm gonna bite it. I'll do a little chew, and then when I give a thumbs up, you give me the other half. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a line guy. And it's the end of the mess. We all want to get the fuck out of there. Oh, God. We all want to get out of there. Pardon my French. Pardon my French. But yeah, no, you can't. Uh, yeah, no, obviously no wine was offered. But dude, this is the move. I'm sorry if you can't see it if, if, for the people that don't the video. But it's, you take it, he puts it in your hand. Then with your one hand, you you grab it out of your palm and hold it. And then with your other hand, you pull your mask off and you put it in. You put your mask back on and you sit down and you pray that you don't have to wear this mask within two months. <laughs> Big vaccines. We got, bro, we're going to have vaccine choices. They're going to come in flavors. It's unbelievable. We got Every time I turn around, everyone's almost done making them. It's going to be free. I'm telling you, man. Be stocking up. <sighs> I'm going to double down. I'm going to take one of every company's. That's what right. my, my father-in-law is going to do. He said, I'm taking them all. <laughs> I was just kidding. Holy shit. I'm ahead of my own fucking time. Is he really? What if one what company said? says, Oz works, but if you take it with any others, you could die? I mean, obviously, you you you, you got to take one if that's the case, but he he's, he's going to load up. He goes, what, what's... What's the harm? If, if if one don't get it, the other one will. I like that attitude. I like that. You know, I mean, it's the kind of man, does he pop an Advil and a Tylenol when his back aches? I got to try that. <laughs> Double down, <laughs> right? So that's interesting, man. He's really going to do that? He wasn't joking? No, no. He's he's, he's taking them all. Um I wanted to get back to the communion yeah. on yeah. the wine on the wine um pre-COVID. First of all, I never took the wine. Yeah. I think that's I think that's disgusting. Yeah, with the white, the, with the cloth. I mean, come on, guy. Come on, bro. Who, who, who are we kidding with that? You, yeah, you're going yeah. to wipe the thing down, but the person put their lips in the wine. Or, you know, come on. It's a joke. Yeah, we discussed that. I know. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. He we, oh, we, talked, we talked, about, we talked yeah. about the wine wipe? Yeah, yeah. It's usually white wine, too. The guy, the priest had it today, and the guy had it last week, and it was white. I'm wondering if, because they don't want red lips wrapping it up, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to go into your clothes with red lips. White wine? It's supposed to be, isn't it supposed to be the blood? That's what I thought, bro, but now it's white. Guy, is anything, anything anymore? Who we kidding? No, you know? nothing. Yeah. Uh, I got some notes here I want to get up? into. Absolutely. Um, I love when you have notes, man. It's awesome. <laughs> First of all, I have to tell the listeners because I've been getting a lot of a lot of questions on this one topic that we covered three weeks ago, and I have to open up my laptop here to give the correct website. People were wondering what hot sauce I was talking about from the Amalfi Coast. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna give everybody the uh, website. Uh, it's called Mama. Agata. Now that's spelled M A M M A A G A T A dot com. That's Mama Agata dot com. The name of the product is called Red Hell. R E D Hell. E H E L L. And if you're ever in the Malfi Coast after this thing lifts up, you have to take this woman's uh, class. Her cooking class is simply amazing. Um, we were there on our honeymoon, and she's just a, a doll. I get no money for saying that. It's just a recommendation. Go to her website nice. and get yourself some bottles of the Red Hell. Now, that's a great come on, name. what the Red? Great what name. the hell? I'm getting tired of this shit. This main gate. Okay. I want to talk about, which 
I actually look forward to this, and I don't know what type of response you've been getting, but this, but this newsletter is the highlight of my week. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you say anything about that, I appreciate it. I came onto the couch the other day uh, to watch TV, and Jackie had the TV on, but she's got a phone on, and the TV's down. And I'm like, that's not the cast, because I can hear you. She's hooked, bro, on uh, what did my wife get on Amazon. That thing's got to be blowing up, man. I mean, she, I haven't like seen that. her watch something like that since she watched... That guy who used to do one slice, I guess he still does one bite with the pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pizza guy. When you were on it, that's how she found it. So, uh, yeah, that thing is great, too, man. That thing is great, too. But thanks. No, no, these these stories here <laughs> need to be... Uh, I don't know if you guys are getting the, the Pete Corielli uh, newsletter. Go to his website and sign up for it. It's just a burst of comedy in the, in the middle of the week that nearly makes me... <laughs> Makes me smile. Oh, God, bro. I I want to talk about your eating habits. Oh, at, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> your wife is is telling you that you what chew chew too you eat loud. I I eat like a pig overall. Yeah, she says I eat like a pig, and I have for a long time. She says, and she's and and. She can't, it's, it, it bothers her. And now when we go out with other people. She's like, it was embarrassing. And I'm like, you know, well, nobody fucking says anything. She's like, what do you want them to say, Pete? They're not going to fucking say you eat like a pig, you know? But uh, food in the corner, she claims I have food here and that uh, I keep talking and eating and it's coming out, right? <laughs> but anyway, I disagree. But then the other night, the other night, we're eating just the three of us, me, her, and Sadie. And I literally, we got fries in the middle of the table and I'm eating some with my left hand and with my right hand, I'm grabbing the fries and she stops talking. So I look up and she's looking at me and then Sadie looks at me and I'm like, what? And she goes, look at yourself. This is what I'm talking about. Look at what you're doing, right? So we went out with another couple this weekend. We went horseback riding and I made a conscious choice to try and like in between every bite, bro, and after every bite, I put a napkin to me and do the pat and I lean back and chew it and then lean forward and then grab another one. And <laughs> we had three appetizers. And I got to say, dude, every single basket, there was the one left. That is the bounciest, ridiculous shit. Can we stop doing that? Everybody leaves the one. They leave the one. I just said, I'm anybody, I'm taking it. So I took it. But other than that, yes, I was, uh, yeah, dude, I guess I got to work on my dining habits. Well, Do you find well, that? Well, uh, my father is like you. He chews with his mouth open, and and so does Lana. It's it's literally Lana chews with her mouth open, and it's so annoying. And I keep telling her this. See, this is the difference. If I think if Lana tells me something, I'm like you. I try and correct it. Right. Right, right. If I tell Lana something, you're chewing loud again. There's no like effort to <laughs> rectify the problem. <laughs> he could have listened to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we last yesterday we got in the car with the kids, and, and this is another thing. And I told her this time and time again. She eats an apple in the car, and it drives me out of my mind. The volume in which she eats it is just mind-numbing. So she'll take a bite. You know, it's that, It's that. you know, we talked about this before. I got that uh, the disease called um, misophonia. Right. Where, right, really. where hone into, like, little little things. You know, like a, a, a pop can opens on a plane. It, it, it runs right through my spine, right? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm sorry. It's funny as shit. Yeah. But is so there she, something to be said, though, for the fact that it's a healthy thing? It's not a, it's not a Dorito. It's a nice, crisp apple. Does that make it a little more no, easier to handle? No. 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 It's just, it's just the, the first bite, and it's like, it's just, it's just the, God, it, it runs through my, my back. So 
It's an apple, bro. I know, but Jesus, the way someone eats an apple, a whole apple, that's a that's a lot of torque clipping those pieces off the core. So I go again with the apple. You know, and I and I get a look like you know, like I'm doing it. So I I I I think in, in, in this situation and your situation that we are more prone for constructive criticism. I don't know, like if you told your wife something that 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 she does that annoys you, is she fixing it? No, not usually. Uh, too bad. I get like if I say, "Can you stop digging into your candy bag? I can't hear the TV," and she's like, "Put it up." Too bad, right? But. <laughs> if it was the other way around, you know, but <laughs> what, what I've done though, and I got a suggestion. If you tried this with Lana, if you, if you don't like the sound of something, you got to offer an alternative way for the person to eat the thing. You know, you can't just say again with the apple, you got to go get, get it, you know, give her an option. How, what do you want to do? She's got to eat the apple. It's a good thing to be eating, bro. My problem is the eat the apple before we get in the car. Oh Everything. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I'm divorcing you. I got to eat an apple before I get in the car because you don't like the sound of the bite of an apple, bro. Come on. What? You going to give me a COVID test before I get in the car, too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's such a such a bad thing that it just drives me crazy. Anyway, it, it's, it's <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm busting your balls. It, but you it's know. one of the, it's one of those things that just drives me nuts. And I and I want to get into where we went yesterday. Now we're not big on fast food. That's not really what we do as a family. Yeah, yeah. For our for our kids, I you know I've I've been cooking like uh, Emeril Agassi over here for the last two hundred and twenty days. But what we found is if you go out once a week for a In and Out burger or a Chick Fil A sandwich, it really breaks up the week because you know the kids aren't you know nothing's open here, can't do nothing. Right. It's a nice little time killer right. with the family in the car. Now Absolutely. we went to we went to Chick Fil A. For those of you around the country who are not familiar with Chick Chick Fil A, it's probably one of the best chicken sandwiches in the fast food category. Right. right? I, they also have chicken uh -huh. nuggets. Everything's chicken there. It's really good. I got a question about that too. Afterwards, about the Chick Fil A because it's sort of commercial. Have you ever had it? I don't. I can't recall ever having it. But they had a commercial <laughs> where the guy says yesterday. I'm watching, and he says. Uh, Freshly breaded chicken, right? Freshly bre and then he's dropping it into the fryer, right? So you, does that mean that their chicken isn't, it's coming frozen in a nugget, delivered, right? And then they take the frozen product and they dump it in the fryer, right? I'm not exactly clear on preparation of the chicken. I don't know if they're doing it on site or if it's coming in pre-made. I just know that their chicken is supposed to be one of these, you know, like, free range like then don't quote me on this uh, it's supposed to be better chicken than the rubber chicken that you're getting at mcdonald's right, All right. yeah so we go to the drive through right and this is what i love about this restaurant and i don't know if you've seen this at any other drive-ins drive throughs they come out to the car so they got the the employees are in the line taking the order while you're in the line. I mean, is this, this place a is pandemic. Is this a pandemic? No, this no? is this is this is what they do. It's constantly packed there. So instead of like having the intercom, one person ordering at a time, they got four, five, six people working the cars. Wow, and, and they're getting orders in. Like they have six they registers. They take orders over. before you even reach the intercom to place an order. Normally, is that what you, you say? You don't even do the intercom. It's wow. off. You don't even use wow. it. It's yeah. like a waiter. It's like a waiter coming to the to the car. And no, no, like what you say? No, 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 none of that. This is like, hey, what can I get you? It's a dream it's, for the owner of the Chick Fil A. He's got to be like, look at them, baby. Look at them. <laughs> I gotta have my employees run out there. And, oh my god. So it must be exceptional food, huh? 
It's good. Fast it's, food. It's good. Yeah, as far as fast food, it's good. And, and this is what we're kind of doing to break up the week, take the kids out, goof around in the car or what have you. But uh, yeah, I, I I wanted to also get into where the hell's my notepad? I just had it. Uh, here it is. Also, well, I wanted to. I want to ask you ahead. a food food question from that newsletter. Yeah. The other complaint was that I eat too much around other people, right? When I eat dinner. Now, my question to you is, if you're a person, man or woman, that's not overweight, right? For whatever reason, if you want to shine a light on it, like that matters. But nevertheless, let's say, you you know, you're relatively a weight, normal weighted person and you're eating with other people and you're paying for everything you're eating. Does it matter if you're out with another couple how much you eat in front of them? Like, like, have you ever ate less than you normally would want to eat just because you're like, all right, everybody stopped and I, I could still keep going? Or do you just keep going? When it comes to eating, I don't really pay attention to what people are eating or how much they're eating or whatnot. I, I, I'm, I'm out to have fun. I'm out to eat. I'm out to drink. I ain't monitoring any of that. I had all the appetizers, all the bread, got another basket of bread, ate all my food, and then ate a little bit of Jackie's. And she's like, I'm just saying, guy, people were looking like they were like looking at how much you ate. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) So is this couple someone that you typically go out with on a regular basis or is this a new, new thing? Uh, No, friends, man. Friends. Yeah. So they know they know your eating habits. They know how you are. Actually, well, friends that we've never ate out with before, friends in the neighborhood, yeah. So that was the first time we ate out with them. We've, uh, you know, done other things with them, but never got together for a dinner. So, yeah, might have been a little off-putting. And you're not observant enough to look around the table and go, oh, yeah, they're probably looking at me. I'm just like, like what you just said. Just like what you just said. I'm eating, and I'm not watching what other people are doing. But that's, see, that's, Jackie would call that, then you're feeding. That's feeding. You're not even fucking <laughs> hanging out. You're just, well, when I say I'm not paying attention. I mean, I'm not paying attention to how much they ate. I'm talking that's, with them. <laughs> that's, that's the one I wanted to bring up. The, the, the eating is not eating. It's called feeding. And, and and then she said, and I don't know if you added this in yourself or this is what she actually said. She goes, guy, you, you got food like on your lip. What are your lips numb? Like you, you, <laughs> That's what Jackie you, said. She goes, <laughs> do you not feel it? Are your lips numb? I mean, you're talking and you have food coming out. I mean, I'm looking at you like wipe your fucking mouth before you talk. I go, I, I listen. Oh. I do have a habit, though, and maybe this is from eating alone, like in hotels and stuff. Like, I've been on the road in a hotel where I get food and bring it back, and then I don't have a fork. You ever have that? So I I eat it like tapas, but it's not tapas. Like, I eat the whole (laughs) fucking meal with my fingers, and in between, I'm wiping them with a, a, you know, a a washcloth from the hotel. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you're going. If anybody walked in right now, they would literally think there's a fucking animal in this room a fucking animal right oh yeah the good old the good old towel as the napkin like uh, <laughs> at the, <laughs> when you check out you look on the bathroom floor and you see a face towel covered with pizza sauce <laughs> Actually, when the guy next to me checks out, they find that towel in front of his door. (laughs) That was an old episode. (laughs) Oh, shit. Dude, I speaking of videos, I have to say, I saw a video of Serafina. Dude, she is so adorable, but she was, was she imitating you on the video? She was saying, now give me my meat. No, that was uh, her cousin, I think, uh, said that and told her to say that. So she was kind of mimicking what her cousin was doing. Oh, uh, I, I thought maybe she was Im- imitating daddy having said that jokingly in the past, you know. No, so no, no. She, but, adorable, but, bro. Adorable. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to, I know this has had to happen in your house, right? All right. We're driving in the car, oh, it's about a week ago, and Serafina looks out the window. This is just 
out of blue and goes, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and she said it. <laughs> She said it three times. Dying. What? She said it three times in a row. She's like, "What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that?" And I'm like, and Lana and I are are cracking up in the front seat right now. Fifteen minutes earlier, I got cut off, and I go, "What the fuck is?" And 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 Lana's like, "Babe, so we didn't." Mention it to her. We didn't say that's a bad word. We didn't say anything. We're like if we draw attention to it Maybe she'll keep saying that right very so progressive yes. very progressive, bro. Yeah, I do the lean over hand halfway out better not hear that thing ever again I'll well, give you something well. to say what the fuck about <laughs> <laughs> I like Sadie, your parenting skills <laughs> Did Sadie ever say uh, Bad words when she was younger? Oh, yeah, not knowing that it was a bad word, yeah. Yeah, just mimicking her parents, right? Yeah, 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 like a good one was, uh, I, she gave a good uh, Jesus Christ one time, a bike fell down, Jesus Christ. I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, again yesterday in the back seat, she goes, what the fuck? And I, and I go, hey, Serafina, you know what? It's not. It's a bad word. You can't say. You can't say that word. You got to say. What is that? Or what the heck is that? You can't say that f word. So we're trying to. We're trying to like steer her away from that because you know, as a parent, you know, I I often swear every once in a while around the house, and not even thinking about who's <clears throat> picking that up. But these kids, man, are absorbing stuff. That you don't even know they're absorbing, which is frightening. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I mean, I worry about this stuff on on the computer, but with the with the language, come on, man. Being Italian, the way we use the f bomb, and Jackie uses it worse than me. There's no way. <laughs> Your only bet, I feel like, I tell Sadie, yeah, I yeah, I use it. Yeah, your mother uses it, but you you ain't using it in this house. When you're out of here and you're in college, you can use it all you want if you do. It's kind of trashy, but you can, but not in this house, you know, and she gets it, you know, and and the other day, I don't know if she was saying this, but Jackie got so mad at Sadie, which, you know, never annoying kids, and uh, I was getting mad at her too, but Jackie turns around and goes, says something like, I'm fucking tired of this shit, kid, Sadie, you know, and she used like two F-bombs, which obviously freaks Sadie out, and then I go, whoa, 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 with the F-bombs. No, Pete, don't tell me I can't take it. I, can't. I go, but you don't drop the F-bombs. Because we, we, we say it. I go, but we never say it to her. Come on. Ooh, this is new, new territory. You know? Come home you tomorrow, and you're going to be looking at my kid going, what the fuck are you doing? Do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, she's going to hear it. You just got. I, that's what I feel. I'm not telling you how to parent. But, bro, I'm very, very progressive of you, the way you're... Uh, well, I mean, I, I wanted to see if it went away on its own, but this thing apparently like sunk in and she started. I just don't want her going to preschool and go, I ain't fucking doing that. And I'm like, oh, whoa. But, you know, <laughs> but listen to it. It's, it's such a beautiful word, man. It's like, <laughs> it's such a great word. It's such a great fucking word. <laughs> Right? I mean, your daughter says, I'm not doing the work. Whatever. I'm not fucking doing it. Whoa. We got to call your parents. That's. that's a, <clears throat> oh, <laughs> so, God. bro, uh, I want to ask you one last thing. Yeah. Um, I was downstairs the other day in my, in my studio here, I think, my office dungeon. And um, I was writing late into the night, messing around. And I started having a pain in my chest right up here, right? And then my fingers started tingling. So now Jackie's already sleeping. It's like midnight. So I do a Google and uh, to see where the heart's located exactly. And it's not exactly where the pain was. So it's kind of near, but not exactly. So that, But then, you know, there's the stuff about if your fingers, I Google that, if they're numb, you know. But it says yeah. down the left side, and this was the right side. So I'm like, ah. 
And it was raining, and I'm like, I ain't, what am I going to fucking go sit in the emergency room, and then it's going to be nothing, you know? So then it started hurting more, and I got nervous. So instantly, I blew out my candle, turned out my light, grabbed my phone, and jetted upstairs and laid in bed close to Jackie. Like, she was already sleeping, I just snuggled up. Because I figured if, if I had a heart attack... I, 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 and even if I can't get a gulp, at least at least she'll hear me go. Ah! You know, just a, ah! you know, so I, was, I was trying to be close enough to her to be able to make a phone call for me. You know. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, is this a, uh, a pain where it's like, oh, or, or is it? What is it? What's the describe the pain? It was uh, a, a a constant, just light, p- dull like pain right here. And again, it was running down. And and normally I wouldn't care, but then it was starting to do the fingertips. So then I got up, got a little circulation going, and it didn't go away. And then I'm like, I, is this like the start of one? Is this what they're saying that you should come to the hospital when you have this? I don't know. And then I'm like, what I do know is. You know, I know people like, you know, a friend of mine who was hunting where I live. He's alive now. He was hunting with another guy. And he, I told you this on one of the casts. He looked at the other guy and he said, I'm going down, bro. And then he fell down, God rest, <laughs> with a heart attack. But his friend was able to help him. So I felt like if I was in the basement and I had that, le- I can't call Jackie. She'll come down in the morning. I'm laying here. So I'm like, let me go lay next to her. Because like I said, at the very least, I'll, I'll be no. able to like... <laughs> Could you <laughs> something wake her? <laughs> Can you wake her up and, and say, babe, just so you know, I had a little pain in my heart, plus my fingertips are numb. Uh yeah, I don't think it's anything, but I'm gonna go to sleep. Just you know Boy who cried wolf, bro. Boy who cried wolf, you know. Two weeks ago I told her that I thought my knee was going out. I just got the hip surgery. How many times are you gonna wake up the wife with every little, t- you know, nick and dot? You know what I mean. So I'm like, let me just. I won't wake her up, but I'll just die next to her. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so that that God forbid say happens tonight. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Are you gonna go in, or do you just go? Eh, it's, it's nothing. It's the weirdest thing, but don't you ever feel like if I ignore it, like if I, it's almost like you could tell your heart, you're not doing this. Like if you ignore it, <laughs> it'll go, all right, this guy ain't fucking around. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you let it attack you, then it will attack. It's like a dog. If you act scared, it's going to attack. But if you act like, <laughs> fuck you, heart, stay in line, motherfucker. We got 25 at least, bitch. Keep marching you know <laughs> but oh, you, if God. you act feeble then you become feeble <laughs> shit man oh boy well that was a good hang bro good hang um you plug in anything seven. what do you got you doing any shows no we're done the tour's over <laughs> Uh, did you do them again this weekend in vegas yeah did it yeah. again this weekend in vegas awesome. and um yeah, it's it was great. It was four shows over the last two weekends. Fantastic to get up, but uh, you know, it's uh, that came to an end quick. Um, just looking over any last things. No, I got no new business. Just want to thank everybody for listening to the Pete and Sebastian show. We will be back next week, and it's always a pleasure hanging with my good friend Pete. Same, bro. Tell the family I said hello, and we yeah. will see you next week. Great hanging, man. Take care. Later.